Hi guys, <coughs> right, green speed fight, this is all running now, just got the head stop to change and put this panel back on, but I was asked um, by a fellow YouTuber about uh, changing the crank, I've done a few videos on this, but I suppose I haven't gone in quite enough depth for him, um, so if you can imagine this side of the engine, so you're going to, what you can do now is you're going to be splitting the engine to change the crank for whatever reason. Could be um, that the oil seals are gone, the bearings are gone, um, so you need to split the engine. So on this side here, you don't have to touch the clutch, but you do need to get this off. So like I've showed you so many times before, claw hammer, off this comes, and what you end up with obviously is taking this off, and you obviously end up with that off. And then all you've got here now would be looking like that. Okay, that's the shank this side. There is nothing more on this side of the engine you need to do just that okay now if you're taking the engine out obviously you want the bottom fairing panel off you want the shock do that last and that's just the bolt there the reason why you take the bottom bit off is because the other side of here you've got your electrics that do the stator coil which is a plug like this and your main electrics so on so you disconnect that um, then most of this is free you've obviously got your petrol your oil um, and then the main bolt through here. I have shown you before the main bolt comes out and the engine just comes out So you can either do it on the bike or off the bike. I have shown you that but today I'm just talking about actually splitting the engine. So You've got to get the head off um, I've shown you that before four bolts. They're these big bolts here like this Four of them come off the head comes off and then basically you're able to split the engine screwdrivers without damaging the casing too much and they're apart, okay? Um, Obviously, you've come around this side now. So let me uh, put this down for a minute. Oh, there we go. Right, you're on this side of the bike now. And what you're going to see when you take the fan off is you've got something like this. Okay, and that bolt there, again, I've shown you, you need the extraction tool to get this off. There's another video. Then you're left with this bit here. And obviously, two screws come out. That comes out. And now this is what you'll be seeing on the other side of the engine. Okay, and this is where your bearing and everything else is sitting okay like this okay now it's difficult but you always want this up higher so you imagine you split the engine now and this is now you're ready to put it all back together again so you put this in along the engine back to over here and that's come through down now now i've said it before put this on and then gently tap it through keeping this up okay gently tap 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 until it's fully against this now so now you've got the bearing sitting here and you're all still sitting here. That's pucker, that's done. Okay? And now you're wondering how to get this now, other side of the engine, onto here. Okay? Obviously, no nut. What I always do, <coughs> gasket goes on here, and you wonder why the gasket's sealed across the top. That just cuts away. Gasket goes on here. So you've got gasket, gasket. Water cooled, slightly different um, with gaskets, but generally the same. Okay? And this is what you'll be seeing. This is the main bearings. Okay? Your engine bearings. And then the other side, just that little black bit there, is your oil seal, okay? That's what goes, that's when you lose compression on the bike, and you kick it over, kick it over, it's not sucking the petrol through, it's because of that little fella there, all right? There's two, one on this side, and one on the other side, and you can easily flick them out. Now, as for the bearing itself, again, I've shown you, get an oversized socket, once you've got that out, and just push it out, the new one, don't do the same idea whacking it back in, you'll damage the bearing, okay? So you've got to get a bit of wood, tap it back in nice and flat until it's flush. Now, this is what you should end up with, is you imagine the other side of the engine, and you've got this facing you, okay? You've done all this side, the variator's back on, if you want to put it back on, it's fine. And what you're gonna have difficulty now, obviously the stand's not on there normally, is you are trying to get this to go nicely now back in here, okay? What you'll find is you get to a stage where it won't go anymore, all right, which my friend's at now and he's worried about how to whack it on and so on. You don't, okay? Push it on as hard as you can. Must remember to keep this top dead center. The reason why I keep saying it is because what will happen, you'll push it a bit more in, it's down here, it won't go up, okay? So, top dead center, put a screwdriver through it, a bit of rag, whatever you want to do. How I do mine, okay? Firstly, a bit of 2T oil round here, okay? And again, this side here, a bit of 2T. Don't use forged type oil, you know, because at the end of the day, 2T will mix your petrol and burn away. So it's nice just to mix that with 2T all round it. And another reason for that, obviously, is when you're going to start the bike, first, metal on metal, 2T may make it a little bit harder to start, 
but you've got oil wrapping around with petrol and away it will go loads of white smoke job done anyway here we go so that would be in like that now you're stuck because you, you can't get it closed anymore now use the screws now there's two different sizes for this one and they all go in here okay let's move that away you can see them and it doesn't matter you take pictures i've always said take pictures haven't i um but you know these long ones will go in there and the short ones will go in here okay so if you can imagine you've got this sort of business now so there's a long one in there that only comes through that much and your short ones go in there and that's what you're never going to see okay normally you'd never see that now see how much room you've got there now, that's quite a bit this is enough just enough so imagine you've got it against the engine now to start tightening these in to get it to tighten up okay that's what you do that's the secret don't whack it round or smash it or snap it put all the engine bolts back in nicely where they go like that another one down there so there's six in total okay and they will then be able to get your engine back together again all right simple now remember don't just tighten one mentally you've got to do it slowly and in the pattern zigzag so how i do it criss cross criss cross middle two criss cross criss cross and keep doing that and the engine will slowly nicely come together now remember i said about this this is where it would go wrong you see if this was dangling down here all of a sudden yeah so keep it up just put a, a, a something through it anything you can to keep that up now as you're tightening it make sure you can wiggle this round okay it might get a little bit stiff don't worry but when it's completely tight this must be able to turn around if it can't can you imagine trying to turn the engine over it's going to really damage it all right and then it saves the bearings as well all right so that's the idea of getting these engines back together again it's the best way i can explain it without having to obviously split an engine in front of you and i've done it on other videos and then once this engine's all back together and this is the hard part you know how tight okay you may not want to pay 30 quid and get yourself a torque wrench but it's just where do you know i mean the water cooled is slightly different i said air cooled doesn't really matter so much um, use the gasket will seal it uh, but once it's all back together again then you're done do you know what i mean that's it nicely back together you've done your six crisscrossing in the middle two crisscrossing in the middle two then obviously your static coil goes back on like that and then this will go back here and then that goes on top and then you, you, away you go if you're ever wondering about people call them wood rough screws whatever they are the bit would go in there again we make their problem that has to go in like that you see if it isn't that would spin around and this that little bit there is to do the timing you see because that does this for your timing okay that's your outside one your timing one and obviously inside for your electrics so yeah that's the best i can do for you guys unfortunately without trying to explain much more because it, 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 just, it is quite difficult to uh to give you a detailed breakdown in the space of you know five ten minutes but yeah that's the top secret use two stroke oil to oil the crank a bit in a bearing if you want to you know be fine you don't really need to do these because they'll get oil around them um you must put your oil seals in now don't try and get them in after you'll never fit them in i mean you suppose you get a longer socket and push it why you know get it in there seated nicely now would i replace the oil seals if i'm placing bearings they're eight quid it's a no boner it's a no no brainer even um i would most certainly change both because if the oil seals have gone or you've damaged them you've got to take the whole engine apart so you might do the whole lot there bearings 20 30 quid oil seals under a tenner so you know that's both sides by the way so you might as well do it then your engine back on and then it's a case of then putting it all back on again and getting your engine running and so on um, when it is back together and you're happy and you can move it by hand and you've got the head back on and tightened the head down and again with your head bolts you know how tight it's got to be a crisscross motion until you think oh, that's just enough so water cooled a bit more difficult because if you haven't got it right you'll leak water into the head so what i do with water cooled is i tighten where i think i am i run the engine a little bit then i put some water in and then if it start leaking i might be able to get the head a little bit you know down a bit more without damaging anything that's just how i do it i'm not saying that's the manual you know i would show you a picture of manual i've got manuals here if you're attempting something you really don't know and you're using youtube videos and you're looking at mine maybe you know get a manual if you think you've got the gist of it that's fine it's always a bit difficult because as i said i sit here and do these every day so um it's a bit more difficult for you but there you go all right that's the trick 
tighten the bolts up use your oil 2t oil not 4t none of this 3 and one wd-40 don't use none of that use the oil that you're going to use in the engine it makes a lot more sense doesn't it right i think we're done guys um you put your engine back on carburetors and getting it running and everything else anything else i can do guys you let me know um as i said this one i've just got to do the headstock on it now um, put the cover back on and this is this is running i've done the stand now so look see it doesn't fall over anymore i've done the uh, front end as well got a couple more bits to do to this and then this will be running um where it runs i mean back on the road it's got four months mot i will put a year's mot on it um it just makes sense doesn't it you know you don't want to move on a bike with four months mot there's no sense in that right i think that's it guys i'm babbling now take care of yourself anything else watch my videos um, there is, as I said, 26th, whatever there is now, you know, um, and anything else I can explain to you, then I will. Right, take care of yourself, guys. Bye-bye.